Hello and welcome to the first of five videos introducing you to radio interferometry. In this first video, we're going to set up an analogy between a radio interferometer and the two-slit experiment. So I'm assuming some familiarity with the two-slit experiment. I'll go over the key results, but if you want to see the physics behind it, I posted some links in the video description that will explain the classical two-slit experiment. So let's sketch the setup of that experiment. And so what we have here is there's a light source emitting light, and the light from that source is traveling to a screen where we will view the brightness of just how much light winds up in various positions on the screen. But between the light source and the screen is a wall with two slits cut into it. And in this problem, there are effectively two length scales. The first length scale is the width of one of the slits. And we're going to assume that both slits are of equal width. So both of these slits are length A across. The other length scale in the problem is B, the distance between the two slits. And here I've drawn it from the center of one slit to the center of another slit. But in many cases, and particularly in radio interferometry, the distance between the slits is much bigger than the size of the slits themselves. And so it doesn't really matter exactly where on the slit B starts and ends. But strictly speaking, it's the center of the two slits. And you might say there's a third length scale, the distance from this wall with the slits in it to the screen. But we're assuming that length is very, very big. And so that when the light reaches the screen, it's effectively a plane wave. And so A and B are the only length scales that we need to concern ourselves with. And so what is the result? How does the pattern of brightness on the screen look? Well, the end result is something like this, where the yellow line and the distance of the yellow line from the screen is indicating the intensity or the brightness of this pattern that shows up on the screen. Right, so at the center of the screen, the light is the brightest, but then we get these places where the light goes effectively to zero before oscillating back out to another bright spot, then back to a fainter spot, and so on. And so strictly speaking, the mathematical pattern here is we have a sine wave with a single period multiplied by an envelope. And so this envelope, again, multiplies the sine wave, causing the brightness to fall off as you get away from the center of the screen. Right, so there's a bright peak at the center of the screen, and then these falling off side lobes, you might call them. And so this is the interference pattern. And the physics behind it is that there are places where light from the two slits arrives in phase. So the light going through the right slit and the right going through the left slit take a path length to the screen that is an integer number of wavelengths. And so the waves arrive in phase and add constructively at that location on the screen. That happens at the center, but that happens everywhere else. We have a bright fringe or a bright peak in the intensity. Places where the intensity is dropping effectively to zero are places where the light from slit A and the light arriving from slit B get to the screen out of phase with each other and add destructively. But what I want to emphasize here is how the length scales A and B control the shape of the sine wave and the envelope. B, the distance between the two slits, controls the period of the sine wave. So what I've sketched here is a case where we've made B bigger, moved the slits further apart, and the sine wave is oscillating more rapidly. Now, rapid might be a little bit of a confusing word. There's no time here. It's rapid as a function of spatial position. So it goes up and down and up and down. The fringe pattern moves faster. Again, faster is a confusing word because there's no time. But the fringes are closer together the further apart you make the slits. And conversely, if you make the slits closer together, so make B smaller, we get a slower sine wave, where again, by 
fast. We mean more oscillations per unit distance. And by slow, we mean very few oscillations per unit distance. The key point is that the distance between the slits controls the period of the sine wave. A, on the other hand, the width of any one slit controls the width of this multiplicative envelope. So in this case, where the slits are very wide, the envelope gets narrower, meaning that you see those side lobes, the fringes further from the central fringe, are much fainter. And conversely, if the slits are very, very narrow, the envelope becomes very wide, meaning that the fringes far from the center are not really damped or suppressed at all. We get to see a lot of the full sine wave. And in the extreme limit where A is a delta function, that makes the slits infinitely small, the envelope vanishes, and we'd get a pure sine wave for our interference pattern. Interferometry is effectively this process run in reverse. Here, we have signals coming from the sky instead of the screen where the signals wind up. The signals start on the sky, which is functioning like our screen, and travel downward towards our antennas. And those antennas have two length scales associated with them. There's A, the size of the dish or of the antenna itself is playing the role of the width of the slit. And B here, the distance between the antennas, is playing the role of the distance between the slits. And so I've erased A and B because I need to draw below the antennas where I was just labeling, but don't forget about those two length scales. But what I said is that this process is basically the two slit experiment run in reverse. The signals come down from the sky, hit the antennas, and then are combined. And this little x in a circle is our symbol for the signals are multiplied together, but you can add them together. You get a very similar effect. But we combine the signals from the two antennas. And what we get is points on the sky where the signals arrived in phase at the two antennas. Well, those signals then add coherently when we combine them. And we get a signal from those points on the sky. Points on the sky where the signals arrived out of phase at the two antennas, when we combine those signals, they add destructively, and we don't actually get a signal from that point on the sky. And so the shape of the way we see the sky with these two antennas is the same shape as the two-slit experiment. We get a sine wave whose period is set by the distance between the two antennas multiplied by an envelope whose width is set by the size of each of the individual antennas. And so next time, we'll express this mathematically so we can talk about what specifically an interferometer measures when emission from the sky comes into the antennas and is combined. But this intuition we get from the two-slit experiment is very important. You make your antennas further apart, and we get a much more rapidly oscillating sine wave running across the sky. And if you make your antennas bigger, we can find the region of which there is signals that we see from the sky into a narrower space, right? Make your antennas bigger, the envelope gets smaller, and we only get signals from a narrower region on the sky.